Unlike evolutionary scientists, social psychologists see jealousy not as an instinct but as an acquired response. The degree of jealousy that we feel in adult life is determined by our childhood. Whether a person will suffer from jealousy his whole life depends on the form of attachment formed in his childhood. If parents don't leave without warning, if they create an environment where the child feels safe and protected, a secure attachment is formed. It means that the person won't be jealous as an adult. These people know by default that they won't be left. These people are not jealous. They don't even need jealousy. They solve their problems in their relationships much earlier than jealousy occurs. But not every family can boast strong relationships. There is also a so-called anxious attachment. It's formed in early childhood when the mother is not used to explaining things. She might roughly push the child away or leave without any explanation. Then the child would always struggle to get her back or keep her around. Naturally, in the future, this type of attachment will develop into jealousy and a tendency for constant control. Humans have three instinctive responses to jealousy. They are similar to our actions in response to fear. To freeze and do nothing, to run and hide from the cause of the feeling, or to proceed straight to action. Scientists have proven that jealousy blocks the thinking process and affects the function of our sensory organs. So jealousy can really blind you is not just a figure of speech. Psychologists say that jealousy has a good side to it too. Fear of losing your loved one is a sign of caring. On one hand, jealousy means that you care about someone. A person we have no feeling for won't make us jealous. On the other hand, Jealousy helps a woman to be a woman and for a man to be a man. When a woman understands that her partner is jealous, she knows that she's important to him. She's sexually attractive and he doesn't want to lose her. So she feels secure as a woman. When a woman is jealous, her partner too realizes that he is needed. He's a good male, that he conquer this woman and she wants to have a child with him, so he is a leader here. On the plus side, when you experience jealousy, it provides you with feedback. And the feedback system, one way or another, signals to your partner that he might have done something wrong. It happens unconsciously, so flirting actually is acceptable, but only to a certain degree. Jealousy marks the limits of what's acceptable. I guess this is its positive side. But when jealousy breaks out of control, it becomes a destructive force. Constant arguments make the family life a living hell with no other things to talk about except for resentment and hard feelings. I cannot think about work at all. I can even cancel all the meetings. For me, of course, this is a huge problem. I've been trying to overcome it for several years now. I see my private life as the main reason for my stress and my low performance at work. It all boils down to jealousy. Jealousy plays an important part in the life of the businessman Vlad Kerpichenkov. His work, people around him, and the man himself suffer from it. Vlad recently ended yet another relationship. His girlfriend got tired of constant accusations and suspicions. Tailing, shadowing, I could ask my friends to spy after her. Once I even hired a PI. I think five or six relationships ended because of jealousy, because I couldn't help myself, couldn't pull myself together. So the relationship had to be ended. Some 
Sometimes jealousy can become pathological. An instinctive response trying to get your partner to stay becomes a psychological disorder and generates delusions. Psychotherapists call it Othello syndrome. The key thing about this delusion is that a person is convinced in something without having any proof. What makes this delusion, this situation so painful is that a person doesn't need facts. He is already convinced that he's being cheated on. And then he would twist the facts to fit his feelings. Every so often, people act in a way that is not characteristic of them in everyday life. The self-control mechanism malfunctions, and a person can become really aggressive, even physically abuse his partner, something he would later genuinely regret. I've had clients saying that they'd never hit anyone like that. They genuinely believe this to be absolutely impossible. But in that moment of jealousy, they couldn't help themselves. Jealousy in its essence is of course destructive. I agree with that. And when it appears something has to be done to drive it away. And morbid jealousy is two or three times as destructive because without check it might develop into domestic violence. And some people can be particularly dangerous. Especially being under influence, they might try to revenge their imaginary rival, and so on and so forth. Hello? Hello? Please have a seat. Thank you. To deal with his issues, Vlad went to a psychotherapist. We have to understand what's behind this jealousy. Most likely, there's something else. It might be fear of intimacy, fear of letting a woman into your life, fear of commitment in general. Because this is a completely different feeling, and we can deal with it on a psychological level. There's no need for drugs here, as I understand. We just have to work on this problem psychologically. In this case, jealousy is not a psychological disorder. Underlying Vlad's problems are a fear of loneliness, an attempt to protect himself from possible cheating. Getting these feelings in check is possible only with a lot of work. It's always easier to go away without dealing with the situation than to stay and try to figure it out, to work on it and have some result. I will do my best to free my life of jealousy. On one hand, jealousy is a sign of caring. On the other, it's an excruciating state that brings suffering both to the object of jealousy and to the person being jealous. What is the physiology behind this feeling? Is it possible to see jealousy? We decided to try in our next experiment. Taking part in it will be a professional profiler, an expert in human emotions, a polygraph examiner, and Dasha, a girl who has no clue about the real goal of our experiment. Hello. Hello. How can I address you? Daria. We are making a documentary about positive emotions. To be precise, emotions that are experienced by women, not men, because women are much more emotional than us men. The experts hooked the girl up to a polygraph. This device is used to detect lying. It records different breathing metrics, heart rate, blood pressure, dynamics, and galvanic skin reaction a measure of skin sensitivity that changes with different emotions. To get a baseline, a polygraph readings on different body systems, Dasha is asked to remember pleasant moments of her life. It was exactly three years ago. Okay, what happened? It was a honeymoon trip to Bali. The next part of the experiment is watching a video. Let's proceed now to the next step. We are going to see an ocean now. The video lasts about three to five minutes. Now you have to watch it and say nothing. Just experience the emotions that are caused by the video. Okay? In the beginning, video does in fact consist of sea landscapes with a soothing wash of breaking waves. 
but the middle part of the video makes Dasha have a strong spasm of jealousy. Shown in this video is Daniel, Dasha's husband. He's sitting in a cafe with a girl he's obviously interested in. Actually, he loves his wife very much and is not capable of cheating. We convinced the young man to play along for our experiment. I want to go on a hunch and say that in that moment, it wasn't anxiety that you were experiencing, but some other feeling. My guess is that it was jealousy. Am I getting it right? Well, a, a little. A little? A little, yes. Dasha tries to hide her feelings, but the polygraph registered a storm of emotions. All her physiological metrics increased several times. The readings went through the roof. Her heart rate, as you might remember, was around 80 to 85 at baseline. But here, it increased to 95 to 100. The reading on the uh, galvanic skin reaction. You can see how stable it was during the C part of the video and how the modulations started changing during this jealousy triggering episode. You see how big the changes are. This is hard data, very visual and graphic. As much as Dasha insists that she had control over her emotions, that she understood what was happening, it's normal. But in the beginning, she had doubt. She had almost a question mark on her face. Her eyebrows were raised, and there was a sadness that quickly changed into artificial smile. It's meant to say that, guys, I need to hide all the emotions I'm going through right now. But the polygraph registered the situation when her anxiety became strong enough. And the diagrams we were looking at later showed that Dasha experienced a storm of emotions. Jealousy is a powerful physiological process that makes the whole body boil. The breathing grows faster, the heart rate increases, huge amounts of cortisol are released into the bloodstream. To neutralize its action, the body starts to produce adrenaline and the so-called happiness hormone dopamine. It makes some jealous people enjoy their suffering. This is for you. You can carefully stand up now. Easy, easy, easy. Take the flowers only carefully. I will help you to take this off because you need some time to... Hey, it's till the wedding, hon. I'm sorry. I couldn't find a more stupid way to surprise you. Bravo. Love each other. Enjoy each other and be happy. Our experiment showed that a fit of jealousy puts a serious load on our body. Scientists proved that cardiovascular system of jealous people wears down 10 to 15 years earlier. So jealousy is an excruciating passion. Scientists still argue whether we acquire it in the course of our life or if it's an instinct that we inherited from our ancestors. But experts agree on one thing. When jealousy gets out of control, it becomes a destructive force that has nothing to do with love.